Hello, welcome. My name is San. This is a reading today for Aries. There are no dates on my readings. I trust that when they find you, if they resonate, then they're yours at that time. Aries, I'm doing your reading with my three decks blended into one, so you'll see a mix of all three in your spread today. We've got the purring monster cat right behind the camera, so you might you might hear some of that in the audio. Okay, so we've got the netcaster preparations come to fruition on the split and the page of fire at the bottom of the deck. Okay, so the it's really fitting actually for what's here on the table for you, which is a very strange story that's coming through. I'm not I mean, I'm going to read it the way that it's that I'm seeing it, but I know that it's not completely accurately portrayed because it's some sort of um it's coming through in the reading almost as an animal, like having an, an encounter or an exchange with a wild animal. Um, but it could be a child. I, it could be another adult, but it doesn't quite feel that way. It could be an elemental. It could be some sort of spirit energy because whatever it is, it's, it's coming through as um, not just the standard kind of conversation or exchange it's it, and in fact the the way of communicating that is happening is i want to say maybe nonverbal right perhaps very energetic or maybe just kind of like with body language so um the netcaster being this first card here is kind of bringing in this idea of almost kind of drawing something to you really delicately, like kind of setting an intention or casting a net and then pulling it towards you very gently with the page of fire um, being kind of an invitation to enter an unusual space or a new experience. And that's you, that's your kind of um, maybe energetic casting of a net in order to pull somebody into a unique or something into a unique experience with you. And it seems to be a very delicate matter, right? So let's pull an overall energy from the creativity oracle. I'm just watching, watching Monster behind the camera. <laughs> He's decided it's time to bathe. Okay, overall energy for Aries. Risk, interesting. Okay, so that's interesting. I mean, look at this creature on the card here. It's this bird. I believe maybe it's a cardinal, um, but it looks angry or startled or, you know, it's definitely not in a peaceful state. If, if it's communicating anything, it's doing it with, um, you know, uh, a bold energy, right? So with the message on the back saying risk, it's saying be aware or you will have to beware. Do not deny the risk and hazards that you see. So what's interesting is that this is what seems to be the delicate issue or the risk here is that you don't want to startle or scare away whatever energy or individual or being or consciousness that it is that you're trying to gently pull towards you in this with this net caster energy. Um, like I said, it's it, again, it's coming through as like very nonverbal. I mean, maybe you're just communicating through your actions. It's like you're doing something that perhaps they are a witness to, and you're hoping that your actions are communicating almost that, you know, that you are, that your door is open, that you are um, easy to approach, or that you are welcoming and safe space for example it almost okay it feels like we could be talking about somebody who is in kind of like a trauma state perhaps or there's a big risk of kind of that's the risk there's a big risk of triggering a fear or a trauma type of energy with with them i think that's why it's coming through as um kind of a wild animal energy because there's this absolute delicate 
touch required in order to not startle them away. Is it, it's kind of like if you startle, if you, if you, that's the risk here. It's almost like you have one chance to really make this connection. If you startle them by moving too quickly or interestingly, I'm about to say that make a sudden move because it does look like at some point you do make a sudden move. Um, but that's the risk there is that you could startle them away and then that would be the end of it. It's, it's your only opportunity. It's something like that. Okay. So, okay. So we're beginning the reading here with the moon card and this particular moon today was coming through almost, you know, those old kind of dial phones where you, you have to pull it with your finger and then the number clicks back. You know, those old ro rotary, that's what I'm looking for. Those old rotary phones. It was talking about kind of um, sending, it's the casting of the net, right? It's kind of sending out a call or a signal. It's interesting how it's coming through this kind of old technology or um, antiquated technology or, or an, an unusual or ancient perhaps way of sending out a call or setting an intention which could just be talking about with the moon energy could just be talking about energetically or psychically um kind of sending out the signal that you would like for this one to come in closer to you where you can have an exchange right with the three of earth coming up next that's a collaboration card it's kind of like you are sending out your signal and then kind of keeping your eye on the horizon to see whether that signal was received the way you will know that that signal is received is not by receiving a counter signal it's by them coming into view here with the eagle card right so it's like you've got your eye on the horizon and then here they come so they absolutely did receive your message or hear the call or respond to your intention and here they come with the eagle energy interesting how it's coming in with this eagle because because this eagle was in another reading a couple readings ago where the eagle was kind of coming in and snatching something from somebody in that reading it was talking about intellectual property or just something that was um pr that was put out in the public or out for for people to perceive it and the eagle didn't realize that it belonged to somebody. It's like, I didn't realize somebody was using this. It's, it's got a lot of a similar vibe in this reading because the Ace of Fire is coming up too. And I think that was the exact same card that the eagle was coming in to kind of swoop away in that other reading. But this is coming, it's, it's a very different message today. You actually want them to come in and, and get near this fire, right? It's like setting, setting out a light or your signal in some regard for them to respond to and they absolutely are so okay this but this is where it gets interesting you are coming through with this king of earth energy which is is very um un aries like of you but that's the interesting thing this is more appropriately matched to your energy but you can see how similar they are I feel like this came up in that other reading too, where it was like the King of Earth was over there somewhere. And I was saying that there seems to be some sort of a connection between the two, right? It's almost like this red garb here is this is the same as this fire in this lantern here. And it's, it's almost as if that fire is somehow being disguised or muted or I guess disguised would be, it's almost like camouflage. It's being camouflaged in an earth energy because there's this need to kind of not be seen or perceived. What you want to be perceived is this ace of fire. So, okay, so here you are. It's kind of like you send out the signal, you see that they're responding, and so you get, you get ready here with the king of earth. It's almost like putting on a camouflage, putting on the, the what are those called? You know those uh, the the camouflage clothes that people wear when they're hunting, right? So okay, and then the Indian cross. It's like, well, the Indian cross and the Ace of Fire are very similar energies. It's kind of coming through almost like setting a trap or setting bait, especially with that net caster. It's just like fishing, right? This is where all this wildlife energy is coming in and the camouflage. Um, it's and it's kind of like you're setting up this scene and standing right next to it and being absolutely still 
so that they will come towards this fire because if they see you, they're not going to come, right? That's why I'm describing it as a wild animal. It's like trying to have a, a, a up close intimate experience with a deer in the woods and there's no way you can get you can't get close to it by just approaching it. You have to have it come to you. So that's what the whole situation here is talking about, this delicate kind of calling or um, pulling somebody in energetically in a really gentle way. And it doesn't have hunter in it at all. It's just, it's coming through that way because it wants to communicate how absolutely delicate this is. I mean, maybe we're talking about kind of um, connecting with a, like a frightened child, something like that. Um, you see what I'm saying? It's a delicate situation. What, whoever or whatever it is that you're wanting to connect with, they are, it's like they're easily startled or they're in a vulnerable state perhaps. Um, and so you're being exceptionally deliberate about how you get them close to you because there is actually this real, maybe it's, it's offering a healing. It's absolutely wanting to a heart connection with this, with this one. Your intention is absolutely pure and, and high, a high intention. Um, but because of the state that they're in and so easily startled, it's like you have to kind of tiptoe, right? So, and then this here with the witness card, this is you standing next to the Indian cross or the Ace of Fire. The interesting thing about the Indian cross, which I haven't touched on yet, is um, maybe where this possibility of like elemental or spirit, if you're trying to connect with a spirit, something like that, that's maybe where this is, it, why this is here, because this talks to me about um, kind of a, a multi-dimensional megaphone or communication device, right? Which is fascinating because we were talking here about an unusual or ancient way of communicating that's not using, you know, today's technology, for example. The technology that it's using is almost like this multi-dimensional portal, perhaps. I mean, even if we're talking about connecting, I mean, maybe we really are literally talking about connecting with wildlife in some form. Maybe you're aware of some sort of um, animal in your vicinity that is wounded and you want to help recuperate it, but but um, you know what that is like, right? Trying, not only is it difficult to approach an animal on a good day, but when they're wounded or unwell, it's, it's even more challenging, right? Because you could set them in, you could set them off in an energy that is undesirable, right? So that's what the Indian cross is talking about. Perhaps it's kind of this um, way of connecting energetically or multidimensionally. It's almost like trying to maybe bypass the ego state and connect. It's like you are almost standing um, with or in your higher self, wanting to connect with their higher self. That's what the Andean cross is talking about. Um, but having to do it by going through kind of the egoic personality first. Does that make sense? So it's like you need to draw their them close to you, their ego self close to you without startling them away in order for them to kind of get within the vicinity of your high vibrational energy so that you can connect on a higher level. That's maybe what that Indian cross is talking about, right? Okay, so the witness card, and you know what, maybe it was this card. So, but you see what, what this what this is talking about. It's like the eagle coming in to swoop up this ace of fire and it's like in the midst of that act with the eagle coming in to, to connect with whatever it is that you've put out for them. It's like there you are kind of delicately entering the scene. Um, well, this is the interesting thing, okay? There's something about not really knowing what you're going to do until, it's like trusting that you're gonna know what to do in the moment. Trusting your guidance and your spontaneous in the moment knowing, right? So it's like here you are standing, standing next to whatever it is that you have on offer, being absolutely still, watching them approach, and not really having a plan, right? So there's this moment here where that becomes apparent and critical in, the, in that they're, here they are, it's like they're right at your feet and they look up and they see you. And so that's this, 
that's the moment, right? This is this possible, they could, they could take off and it, that's it, right? And so it's like, here it is, this is the moment. It's like you have a lightning flash worth of a second to be able to know what to do next in order to make this a meaningful experience, right? What a strange circumstance, okay? So the card that comes up next is the Rainmaker, and this is your spontaneous action or reaction in the moment, which is really interesting. It's almost like, it's somehow it's it's kind of mimicking them in some way, but it looks to me like you go from being absolutely still and kind of camouflaged and hidden somehow to being like really boldly, exceptionally expressive, right? It's like you do something that is in a sense really risky because it's almost counterintuitive. If you go from being really kind of silent and still and quiet and not wanting to startle them to almost like intentionally startling them, right? Do you see what I'm saying? That could be the risk here. But there's something here about that maybe that's exactly what is needed. Almost Maybe, okay, well, this is interesting. It could be, um, you know, kind of tapping into what I know about hypnosis and how the mind works is that there is this kind of um, tool that you can use where you, where you startle the the mind in a sense in order to get past that ego fear state that's that's right at the forefront. You see what I'm saying? It's kind of bypassing that part of the mind and getting to the true connection that's right beyond that. It could be something like that, but there's something about mimicking them or maybe it's on maybe it's like your act you're acting startled or is it as if they're um, you know, a risk to you in some way, something like that. It's not like you're kind of reflecting something back to them that they are immediately mesmerized with, I want to say, because there's this kind of eye lock situation that happens. They're instantly intrigued instead of being scared away. They're, they're present. They're, they're attentive. They're curious, right? Because the five of fire is coming next. And this one is talking about kind of being the audience member is how it came through in yesterday's reading. It's like taking a seat and watching the show. Suddenly you're putting on this show that they're finding completely compelling and mesmerizing. And it's like, it just moves through you in the moment. This need to, it's almost like doing a dance, doing some sort of performance. This is the interesting thing too, because it's coming through as being nonverbal, being like speaking with body language. There's something that you're doing or way that you're moving that is communicating to them and putting them in a really receptive state of mind, right? It's like, like I said, it's getting past that fear threshold, past the fear knee jerk reaction and going right to this open receptivity where they're present and they're, it's almost like they're deciding to, to take a seat. Do you ever see like when a, when a wild animal is kind of perched to dart, but then they settle and they like sit, right? That's what this is looking like to me. And then this beautiful thing is happening here with the heart home and the beloved. How beautiful is that? This is heart to heart connection, right? And it's like, it's happened. It's happened because could have something to do with this, that there's some sort of something that you do is recognizable or relatable to them, right? I'm just saying this because the way the wings are in all of these things, it's like, it's like you're doing a movement or an action that is like, it gets right to their heart. They, they recognize that they resonate with it and it puts them at ease and it's like, it opens their heart to you. So there's this beautiful heart to heart connection that is happening, which is exactly what you were hoping for, right? So, and then what, okay, this is fascinating too, because it's ending with the call here. So we're starting the reading with some form of a call. It was coming through is that you were sending out a call or a signal, you know, the, the old style phone, and then we're ending on the call here. And it's something like, well, it could just be that they're at the, this is the point where they're recognizing the call. It's kind of like, they're returning the call in a sense here once the heart connection has happened it's almost as if they don't it's maybe that's where the agreement comes in the conscious agreement and the the fact that they're kind of 
choosing to stay. Does that make sense? That is their signal back to you that they're answering the call. You see what I'm saying? It's like there's a response, there's an echo, there's a mirroring, there's a, it's a yes to whatever it is that you're putting out there and that they're willing to either, if not stay here with you to go wherever it is that you are set to propose for them. Sorry, I'm just peeking under the decks here. Right under the right under the page of fire is that joyful muse card. Um, so anyway, okay, so there's something about this nonverbal communication type of thing. This one almost is more animal-like in some form. Like I said, maybe they're a child, maybe they're an autistic child, and so they, they're, not, they're not able to communicate in the traditional way, and that's why this is coming up, this untraditional, unconventional, or older form of communicating. Maybe using telepathy, relying more on telepathy, or relying more on kind of um, just feeling and uh, kind of expressing emotion through the body. You see what I'm saying, right? Um, but there's something about that. It's that they're definitely not, they're kind of not even aware of your presence up until you make it known in a really big way. So you're very successful at kind of um, hiding yourself in the way that is required in order for them to get close to the all this beautiful energy that's available for the two of you but um there's something about how they're they're kind of swooping in they're coming in for this it's like a moth to a flame and it's not until this kind of heart to heart connection happens that it's almost like something in their consciousness shifts it's almost like it's bringing them more um present or more um how do i describe it it's basically like they're one step closer to be able to, being able to speak your language, something like that. Because it's like in this moment is when they recognize what happened here and they signal back their acceptance of it. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's only right at the very end of this spread here that they even know that this is something that was intentionally set up or um, that you had, that this is your, that this is your creation or that this is your intention. Do you see what I'm saying? It's like, they have no idea until you show yourself. And then at the end here, it's almost like they're, okay, so you're doing something here that is reflecting them or connecting with them in a, in a way that they understand. And here it's like they're doing something back this is amazing it's almost like i said almost like an autistic nonverbal child it's like maybe for the first time ever they're actually communicating back to you like actually deliberately doing something that you know is a sign that this connection is indeed made it is recognized and it is welcomed by them and they're so they're in a sense kind of it's like you're sp attempting to speak their language and here it's like they're attempting to speak your language, right? So it's like, this is where it becomes really reciprocal. Do you see what I'm saying? It's actually quite beautiful. So I'm gonna continue to pull cards and create an extended. If you're interested in that, the link is in the description. And if not, I will see you next time, Aries. Thanks, bye.